Today we are going to discuss the third chapter named Rate of Chemical Reactions and Chemical Equilibrium. In daily life we have seen many chemical reactions. Some reactions are very fast and some are very slow. Examples Bursting of firecrackers is a fast reaction and rusting of iron is a slow reaction. Does any factor affect the reaction rate of chemical reactions? Yes. Some factors are influencing chemical reaction. They are nature of reactants, concentration of reactions, pressure, surface area of a solid reactant, temperature, catalyst, light. How the concentration of reactants affect the speed of reaction? Let us do an experiment. For this experiment, we need two test tubes. Concentrated hydrochloric acid, diluted hydrochloric acid, small pieces of magnesium ribbon. Take two test tubes and pour equal volume of diluted hydrochloric acid and concentrated hydrochloric acid. Add small pieces of magnesium ribbon of equal mass. Now we can see the reaction and gas is evolving from the two test tubes. Here in the first test tube, that is, in concentrated hydrochloric acid, the reaction takes place very fast. And in diluted hydrochloric acid, that is, in the second test tube, reaction is slow. From this experiment, we conclude that concentration of reactants influences reaction rate. That is, when concentration of reactants increases, the collision between the molecules increase and rate of reaction increases. we will calculate the rate of chemical reaction. Reaction rate is the speed at which a chemical reaction proceeds. It is often expressed in terms of either the concentration of a product that is formed in a unit of time or the concentration of a reactant that is consumed in a unit of time. When we express a chemical reaction, we have to show the physical nature of reactants and products through their chemical formula. For solid, S. Liquid, L. Gases, G. And for aqua solution, AQ. Now, we will discuss the nature of reactants that affect the reaction rate through an experiment. For this experiment, we need test tubes, diluted hydrochloric acid, small pieces of zinc and magnesium. Pour equal volume of diluted hydrochloric acid in two test tubes. Add zinc in first test tube and magnesium in second test tube. Observe the reaction we can see the reaction rate is more in second test tube than in first one. In the second test tube, fast reaction occurs and magnesium chloride and hydrogen is formed. In the first test tube, reaction occurs slowly. zinc chloride and hydrogen are formed. From this experiment, we can conclude that the nature of reactants affect the reaction rate.
pressure and reaction rate. Influence of pressure is more in the reaction rate of gases. Take two cylinders and fill nitrogen and hydrogen. Increase the pressure of one cylinder using a piston. Here we can see the reaction takes place fastly and forms ammonia. Similarly, we can prepare nitrous oxide using nitrogen and hydrogen chloride by hydrogen and chlorine. Pressure has major role in the industrial preparation of compounds. From this experiment, we conclude that when pressure increased in a chemical reaction involving gases, the number of molecules present in unit volume increases. The rate of collision increases. Hence, the rate of chemical reaction increases. Surface area and rate of reaction. Let us discuss the influence of surface area in a chemical reaction. Surface area influences the chemical reaction involving only solids. Let's check with an example. Take two beakers. Pour equal volume of diluted hydrochloric acid in two beakers. In the first beaker, add some pieces of marble. And in the second beaker, add powdered marble. And observe the chemical reaction. We can see that the rate of reaction is more in second beaker than the first beaker because the surface area is more in second beaker. If a chemical reaction is to take place, the molecules of reactants must collide. Changing the amount of surface area modifies the rate of collision and thus the rate of reaction. If surface area increases, collision frequency increases. If the surface area decreases, so does the number of collision and the rate of reaction. Temperature and reaction rate Temperature has a major role in the reaction rate. Let us do an experiment. Take two boiling tubes. Pour equal volumes of prepared sodium thiosulfate solution in two boiling tubes. Heat one boiling tube. After heating, add 5 ml of diluted hydrochloric acid in two boiling tubes. We can see a sudden light yellow precipitate in heated boiling tube and light yellow precipitate is slowly formed in second boiling tube. From this experiment, we can conclude that the reaction rate is increased in the heated boiling tube due to the increase in temperature. Here, the yellow precipitate is sulfur. When we heat the reactant molecules, their energy and speed increases. That is, at high temperature, the molecules possessing threshold energy increases, so that collision rate also increases, and hence the reaction rate. How the catalyst influence the reaction rate? Catalyst and reaction rate. Take hydrogen peroxide in a test tube. Insert a glowing incense stick inside the test tube. Incense stick is glowing normally. Now add a little manganese dioxide into the test tube that contains hydrogen peroxide. Again, insert the glowing incense stick. We can see the incense stick is glowing more brightly. From this experiment, we can conclude that by adding manganese dioxide 
the dissociation of hydrogen peroxide is increased and more oxygen is liberated that helps the incense stick to burn more brightly. After the reaction, we can filter out manganese dioxide and there is no change in the quantity or quality of manganese dioxide. So, catalysts are the substances that influence the rate of chemical reaction without itself undergoing any permanent chemical change. For more information, there are two types of catalyst. Positive catalyst and negative catalyst. Positive catalyst increases the rate of reaction and negative catalyst decreases the rate of reaction. Manganese dioxide is a positive catalyst and phosphoric acid is a negative catalyst, a biological catalyst. In our body, digestion is carried out by an enzyme called maltose. Light and reaction rate. Take two small cloth pieces. Add a few drops of silver nitrate solution in each cloth. Put one cloth in a black box and the other cloth in sunlight. After a while, the cloth kept in the sunlight turns black, while the other cloth has no change. From this experiment, we can conclude that the presence of sunlight plays a major role in dissociation of silver nitrate. Here, the black color is due to the precipitation of silver. Chemical Equilibrium Till now, we saw the irreversible chemical reactions. Now, we can consider the chemical reactions in which reactants combines to give products and vice versa. This type of chemical reactions are called reversible chemical reaction. For example, heat a boiling tube containing ammonium chloride. While heating in low density, pungent smelling ammonia gas is evolved. If we place a red litmus paper at the mouth of the boiling tube, it turns blue. This happens due to the basic nature of ammonia gas, which is formed by the dissociation of ammonium chloride. After some time, we can see the blue litmus again changes into red. This is because of the acidic nature of high-density hydrogen chloride. At the same time, we can see a white crystal salt stick along the sides of the test tube. This is ammonium chloride. This type of reaction is called reversible reaction. Now, let us see how we can attain chemical equilibrium in reversible reaction. Chemical equilibrium is a state in which forward and backward reactions occur at equal rates. To explain the same, we can conduct an experiment. Take diluted ferric nitrate solution in a test tube. Add few drops of potassium thiocyanate solution into it. We can observe a dark red solution which occurs due to the reaction between ferric nitrate and potassium thiocyanate. The dark red color remains unchanged. After a while, now dilute this solution and pour in three different test tubes. 
in test tube 1 add some ferric nitrate. This further darkens the red color. This happens due to the reaction between ferric nitrate and the leftover potassium thiocyanate and result in ferric thiocyanate. In test tube 2 add some potassium thiocyanate. This further darkens the red color. This happens due to the reaction between potassium thiocyanate and leftover ferric nitrate and results in ferric thiocyanate. In test tube 3, add one drop of potassium nitrate. This lightens the red color. This happens due to the reaction between ferric thiocyanate and potassium nitrate to give reactants. From this experiment, we can conclude that it is a reversible reaction. When the forward and backward reactions occur in equal rates, this state is known as chemical equilibrium. For more information, The influence of concentration in chemical equilibrium. Let's check the influence of concentration through an experiment. Nitrogen and hydrogen combines to give ammonia. If we increase the concentration of nitrogen or hydrogen, we get more ammonia. Industrial production of ammonia is carried out in the same manner. Following is the chemical equation of industrial preparation of ammonia. According to Le Chatelier's principle, where any system at equilibrium is subjected to change in concentration, then the system readjusts itself to counteract the effect of applied change and a new equilibrium is established. In this experiment, when the concentration of nitrogen is increased, the speed of forward reaction increases and more ammonia is produced. Similarly, when the concentration of hydrogen is increased, more ammonia is produced in the same way. If we increase the concentration of ammonia, backward reaction occurs and results in the formation of more nitrogen and hydrogen. If we remove ammonia from the system, again, forward reaction favors and result in more production of ammonia. Influence of temperature in chemical equilibrium Let's check the influence of temperature in chemical equilibrium through an experiment. Take concentrated nitric acid in a test tube and add few copper chips into it we can observe a brown color nitrogen dioxide gas coming out from the test tube. Collect this gas in another test tube and seal the test tube with a cork. Place this test tube in a beaker filled with ice. Now the brown color fades. Place the same test tube in a beaker containing hot water. Now the gas again turns back into brown color. These observations show the influence of temperature in chemical equilibrium. When the test tube was placed in ice, nitrogen dioxide gas converts back into nitrogen tetroxide. When the test tube was placed in hot water, the reactant nitrogen tetroxide changes into the product nitrogen dioxide. Hence, we can conclude that both forward and backward reactions occurred in the test tube. Catalyst and Chemical Equilibrium
In a reversible reaction, the catalyst influences both forward and backward reactions at the same rate. For example, vanadium pentoxide catalyst increases the speed of forward reaction. Henceforth, more ammonia will be produced.